What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today we're gonna to continue on with our subscriber Q&A with Mike Lemming. Uh, so what's up Mike, how you doing today, dude? What's going on, man, how's everything? Good, good, so what do you wanna talk about today? Uh, today we will talk about corals. I don't wanna, I wanted to let everybody know, everybody know it's not like, um, you know, what do you do with this coral? What do you do with that coral? How do you care for this coral? It's mainly an, a broad spectrum, like how to, uh, how to keep them, what you do. Mm -hmm. um, just corals in general, is for not uh, you know specifying any of them, but just questions uh, questions in regards to keeping them and stuff like that. Okay, um, cool. So if you're ready, I'm yeah, ready. Yeah, let's go. Ahead. Oh. Let's go. So ahead, first man. question: uh, a lot of people probably are wondering this. How long have you been keeping corals? Uh, probably since the beginning. I st like I would say the first like maybe half a year after I started saltwater, I kind of moved into like the soft corals like you are, uh, like the uh, the zoanthids and the leathers and all that stuff. It's probably, it's been a while. I mean, I don't even know exactly how long, but uh, I mean, I've been in the hobby totally for 13 years. That's including my freshwater. So it's been, it, man, it's been a long time. I mean, I can't really, can't really pinpoint an exact day or but it's year, been a long but time. It's been a long time. Yeah. And, and it's not really so much how long you've been, it's pretty much how you progressed. Yeah. And as with everybody, I started off with the zoanthids and the soft corals and then moved my way up to Ophelia and all yeah. that. So. All right, well, because uh, yeah, that's one thing, you know, you mm -hmm. post all these videos on how to do stuff, and yeah. for all we know, you've been keeping corals for six months now, and you're just winging it, but yeah, uh, it's it seems, been like seems, three months, man, you kidding me? Yeah, it seems like you, uh, you're you knowledgeable about it. Yeah. Um, here's another question, now, what's your process for acclimating corals? I'm sure at one point you've done mm -hmm. a video, but mm -hmm. you bring a coral home, what are you doing with it? Actually, I haven't done a video on that, I think that's on my to-do list, so that's that's one thing I got to do. Uh, when I bring a coral home, it uh, my acclimation process kind of changes a little bit depending on species so say if i bring home uh, a, a leather coral like a kenya tree or something so i would um go ahead and put that coral in a container and then put a bigger container put that in a bigger container um, and i would drip that that coral for probably uh, 20 minutes depending on the species uh, something like a leather or zoanthid doesn't need to drip that long uh, once it starts overflowing for a little bit then i will put that that container like I'd pour all that water into another container and then that's when I would do my actual dip at that point um, I would have a you know take fresh water out of the tank rinse off the coral uh, in that fresh water to make sure I'm not introducing any kind of dip or anything like that into the reef tank and um, and then put it where you know part of the acclimation process is putting it in the tank where it can be temporarily to to get adjusted to your lighting and your water and then moving it around from there. So, yeah. So you don't, um, you don't float the bags or nothing. You just go right into the drip. Yeah. Not with, I float with fish, but with coral, I do a little differently. I mean, it, I guess it really matter if you get temperature with floating and then drip acclimate salinity and stuff, that's fine. But I like to do it all at one time with, with coral. Yeah. So, um, so like you said with a Kenya tree, what are you doing? Say you bring home an Acropora, is it the same thing or is it kind of, different from, from uh, it's it's the same process just a lot longer longer um, I take a lot longer to like if I get a, a, a $80 piece of uh, you know um, what's a what's a what's one that usually takes longer uh, like a stag horn or something like a small stag mm -hmm. that's like you know $80 $90 I will drip that for a longer period of time and then I will also dip it uh, for and I wouldn't say a longer period of time but I'm, I'm more careful on you know checking out see if there's any red bugs or anything like that really taking the time for that coral so well, good, because that's one thing. I mean, I do the same thing. Like, when you sent me that coral pack, I kind of did it quickly. Um, I, I floated half of them. Uh, the other half, I just went right into the, right into adding, like, a half cup every mm -hmm. 10 or 15 minutes. I was, like I said, I was just trying to do everything quickly because, you know, you know, it was a two-day process from getting the coral. So I was just trying to get them in the tank quickly. So I probably acclimated them pretty, pretty, pretty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did the same thing. I dripped for a little while. Then I did the dip. Then I you know, kind of dunked it in a RODI and then and put it in the tank. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure I was doing everything right. And I'm sure, you know, I have subscribers mm -hmm. that, you know, aren't too sure what to do. I, I, I have subscribers too that just have fish only. So they're not even into the reef yet. So th these are good questions that I got. Um, so my next question is, uh, you obviously just answered that you dip, but what are you using when you dip? Uh, I use Coral RX. That's just, that's just my preferred. Um... Yeah, me too. I've been using that forever and it's like, I believe it's what one or two capfuls for per gallon. Um, yeah. And then when I, I basically, I, I have it written down in the little fish room, but I measured out what a capful actually came out to in milliliters. Um, and that way, if I do sub, you know, a gallon, I can measure out kind of roughly what it well, is. What is but, that? Because I would like it. I'll have to look. I, I want to say it's uh, 
five ml, but I'll have to check, man. I have it written down in there because I always forget what the heck it is. Because um, I, I do that every single time. I got to read the directions and then bust out my phone and figure out. How well, the thing is, is it really stuff. doesn't matter as long as you're not pouring in like uh, two capfuls for a little container. You're going to be yeah. fine. Um, I mean, it really doesn't have to be that precise. I just get roughly the round, roughly where yeah. where the amount is. Yeah. So, oh, and for all of you who call me meathead, and a, and I do have a bro jug, so. He's pretty meatheadish. Yeah, it's pre yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. But so, meatheads have muscles. This guy yeah. doesn't. Yep, so uh, dick. Um, so have you? So I'm sure you've seen people using like the Bayer method and stuff, right? What do you? How do you feel about that? What is it? That kind of scares me. I don't know. I didn't it's hear like what you said. Bug spray, basically. Oh, like spraying it? Just doing no, the, it you, know, you know the Bayer. Um, Oh, the the medicine, the the pill. Oh, um, I don't know. I've never. It's just like I think they buy it at like Home Depot. It's like yeah. insect something bay or stuff. Yeah, what do you I've, feel about that because I've, I've never done it. I've I've never done it. Scares I mean, me. I, I've just I've never done it. I mean, I don't really have an opinion on it. I've always just bought the coral dip and did it that way from the very and beginning. And it works, right? I, it works for me. I yeah, I'd have to look into it, man, because I've never I've never I've heard of it and I've heard of other methods people use like to kill red bugs and stuff like that, but I've never personally did it and never had to, never yeah, had to do it. But um, I'm sure if it works, it works, man. But I'm a, I'm just a coral dip kind of guy. I do it as as a hat the whole time. And yeah, me too. I use uh, I use Coral RX. It's the first one I've ever bought, and I still have a ton of it left. Uh, I'm too scared to use that Bayer stuff. I feel like I don't know. Obviously, I've seen re good results with everybody else. I suggest if you're not familiar with something and you can't find the proper research that you're looking for or don't know anybody who's done it successfully, don't don't try it unless you're completely comfortable with it. Do the Coral RX. It's got simple directions. Follow the directions and you'll be And it works. Fine. I've seen yeah. some nasty stuff come out of some of my corals, man. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. Running around. It's pretty crazy. Um, so, so you kind of answered this earlier about my next question was process for dipping. So what you're saying is you acclimate it in that – bowl within the jug mm -hmm. and then you use that water to use the dip and then what do you leave in the dip for like 15 minutes and then uh, depending on the coral um i but i usually leave them in there for probably 10 15 minutes and then i'll come through with a brush and clean them while they're in the dip mm -hmm. like i'll take them out clean them off and just inspect the coral put it back in the dip once i'm done with all the corals usually i get a couple at a time so i'm cleaning multiple things and then um then use the fresh you know from the reef tank to dip it and rinse it off before putting it in on the frag rack yeah so okay it's about the process yeah, because, um, you know, I do that same thing, and I, I, I remember I saw a video on it, like, months and months ago, and now that I'm actually doing it regularly, you know, I'm getting new corals, trying to, you know, make my tank better, um, I kind of lost track of where I found that, and now I just, in my head, I think that's the way to do it. I could be wrong, but now you're kind of reassuring me that I am doing it the right way, which mm -hmm. is good. Um, so, so, again, back to you, you buy a new coral, you get it home, fish store, wherever you get it from, you get it home. You acclimate it. Um, you put it on. You put it on like the frag rack and let it like mm -hmm. grow out before you put it actually into the aquascape, right? Well, my process is now that I have, um, unfortunately, where I'm at in my uh, with this particular reef tank, I'm kind of running out of real estate. Uh, so I, what I do is I bring a coral home. Like I brought home some stag the other day um, from Kingpin Corals, and actually I put it on a frag rack to let it adapt to the light because the frag rack, if you see in my videos, uh, it's about like five or six inches off the bottom of the tank. Mm -hmm. And I let it sit there for like three or four weeks just to kind of see how it grows. And then if, it, if I find that the growth isn't where I want it to be, then I know that the coral is going to do better in higher light. So when I put in the But you have a few of them, so you can kind yeah. of measure because you have like a few in the back mm -hmm. that are higher. So you mm -hmm. can kind of like adapt to what, what the coral does. Yeah, once I know the coral is going to make it, then I – then I know it's worth putting in the aquascape. I mean, you'll know within a matter of a couple of weeks to like a month when it comes to an acropora if it's going to do well in your system. Um, and some species just don't do well. I mean, I've ha I haven't. I mean, I've had only one right now. Uh, early on, they didn't do well, but other than that, I've been pretty lucky, starting off low light and working its way up. So. Um, so to my next question, so you you have it on the frag rack it's doing good wherever whatever rack you put it on mm -hmm. um what's your next plan of attack do you do you glue it do you use like the epoxy in your video like how are you uh you know adding it to the to the to the system uh, it kind of depends on where it's gonna go in the aquascape if there's a like a hole already there i like to use gel super glue that seems to be the best method for me, me too now Depending on if what type of coral it is, if it's an encrusting, I like to use the just cut the bottom of the frag plug off and then glue it onto the rock and let it encrust over let and it, get yeah. on the rock. Um, 
But if it's something like uh, like a higher end piece, uh, like like I said, a stag or an acropora, I like to try to get it in a part of a rock where it can be more stable with just the glue. Um, but if I have to, I'll use the epoxy. I'm not really a big fan of it because it just takes a while because you kind of got this white speck. I mean, I know you can get color kind, but um, mm. you kind of just have like this white speck in the middle of your tank until it finally turns you know, purple from the core line. So uh, I'd rather use super glue at all times. But it just dictates them where, where it's actually going in the system. So. Yeah, and with, with that super glue, uh, I believe you are using Gorilla Glue. Yeah, the Gorilla. It's for the Home Depot one. Uh, yeah. It's the Gorilla Glue super glue, and that's just something that I've used for years. And uh, yeah, I've been glue. using um, whatever the blue one is. I have it downstairs. The um, the Loctite. The Loctite. Yeah. I've just as it's been working. Yeah, fine. it's yeah. lo- It's because there's like levels. Like I can buy one for like two bucks, but this stuff's like four or five dollars. And it does it does gel up, which is nice because it's not going to just you know put it in the tank and just go everywhere. So it's nice to see like these little bubbles, mm-hmm. and it's worked out for me. It's it's, it's yeah. I got the one in the little green bottle. You'll see it in my fragging videos. It's one. Of the I've I've top. seen it. Yeah. You have that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen it in a couple of your videos that you yeah, use. That's the, the only one I use. I had one time where um, I was using Gorilla Glue, but it I don't know what it was, but it was like foamy. So I put it in. The, I I, try, I was trying to put my um, green star polyp on a rock um because it was just on a frag plug so i took it off there and i put it on the rock i put in that gorilla glue but it was some kind of like foam so once i dropped into the water it just floated all over my tank and it looked like weak styrofoam just like floating all over my tank so obviously that is not the gorilla glue to use one thing to be aware of uh and i wanted to mention this because this actually happened to me is uh when you use a gel super glue be aware of the fish because i know tangs like to pick at new things in the tank um but my scooter blend he ended up going like i finally caught him but he went like almost a week without eating because he went and picked out super glue that wasn't completely hardened and it like sealed his mouth shut so i had to catch him take him out and go in there and pull out the glue out of his mouth to allow you him got to eat again mouth open yeah, I, I opened up his mouth and wow. cut out the super glue. Yeah, well, he would be, you know, obviously dead from starving. But just be aware that your fish might pick at it. I know that uh, Zayze, the uh, um, sailfin tang, he, he, I've had to pull him out three times because he grabs the super glue and then he shuts his, clues his mouth shut. So I got to, he lets me catch him at that point because he's like, oh, I made a mistake. Uh, and then I have to cut the glue out of his mouth. So just be aware of that. Keep an eye on how much you put in there and keep an eye on your fish because yeah. they pick at that kind of stuff. So well, that's a, that's a, that's a good. Uh... Good thing to know, because I had no idea. I would have just chopped it up to, I don't know, would we'll just probably watch my fish die and not even realize that he's glued shut. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's a good yeah. story. I, I had no idea. That's, I, I'd never heard of that happening before. Hmm. Um, it might be just my luck, but, you know, whatever, right? So to the people who haven't seen your videos, you don't got to go nuts telling me how to do it. But basically, softies are low flow, low light. LPS, a little more flow, a little more light. And then... Uh, I mean, uh, LPS and then SPS are uh, a lot of flow, a lot of a lot of light. Is that basically the the rule of thumb? It sums it up pretty much. Um, I mean, and it's also uh, nutrient levels are uh, need to be more pure as you go up in that in that level. Um, I mean, granted, you can get uh, you know easier like Monty SPS that don't really need that uh, low nutrient system. And again, you don't really need a low nutrient system to be successful with, with the SPS, but it does improve color. So. Um, it is true. I mean, softies, you can pretty much, you, they can be low light or high light. You can put them anywhere. They'll grow. Um, the flow is about the same. You're really forgiving on softies. LPS, depending on the species, um, I usually start mine low to medium. Um, and I don't really have a, a type of LPS that I like having up at the top of the tank. It just hasn't happened. And then SPS, uh, of course, I usually do mid to uh, high. But, I mean, I have SPS on the bottom of my tank right now, and they seem to be doing, oh, doing okay. decent. Yeah, so... Um, here's another, uh, another question. So you buy coral, do you, you ever buy offline? You just stick to, to kingpins? You go to LFS's friends? Where do you get the majority of your corals from? Uh, the only time I've ever bought coral offline, it wasn't a good experience. Um, and I don't really need to do that now, now that I have the connections that I do have. Yeah. Um, everybody, any coral I'll ever need is going to be within 20 minutes. I don't ever have to, you know, go online. But for those people who don't, um, have that luxury, uh, that resource buying online is fine uh, you just have to keep an eye on who you buy from don't buy from joe schmo um and like i said i recommend kingpin corals because i've seen him ship i've seen how he ships and i haven't had any issues with it i didn't um, have any with his corals either so i mean the, the reality is it's just you can buy online just be aware of who you buy from mm-hmm. pretty much be reputable because it's easy to throw a coral in the bag and, and watch it get crushed and die yeah, away for the best right yeah um so 
dosing, um, like me, I'm a beginner. Um, what do you recommend for corals in general? Mm -hmm. Like uh, say, well, like like me. Once I set up this new tank, I won't have this calcium, alkalinity, magnesium issue. So everything will be low. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure there's people out there the same way. They have low low levels, and they're just trying to figure out how to dose, how much to dose. Um, what's your recommendations? You know, I, I go go to BRS. I bring, uh, you know, I get a box sent with the calcium, alkalinity, and the magnesium, the two part. Mm -hmm. Where do I start? I know I don't have a dosing pump yet. Or okay. whoever doesn't, but like, where do I start? Well, in the beginning, when you start dosing, you're gonna want obviously keep it simple. You don't want to add any like extra stuff any more than you have to keep the basic calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Those are the three uh, additives that you will be dosing that you really don't need anything else. And other than that, um, my rule of thumb is on a tank that's uh, got softies, you really won't need to dose any additives. Uh, your water change every two weeks will suffice when it comes to replenishing those those, uh, uh, you know, lowered mag magnesium, calcium, alkalinity, all that stuff. And usually in a softy tank, uh, coralline is what uses up that. Not really, the, the coral doesn't use it mm -hmm. up. Now, in a, in a tank that has uh, mostly SP, uh, mostly LPS, um, and it's about, you know, medium stocked, I mean, it, it just depends. So what I recommend is starting at, uh, you know, 15 milliliters per 25 gallons of actual water. So that's after you take your full system, minus the rock, you kind of get an estimate how much water is there. And, uh, and then start off, like I said, 15 milliliters of both equally of calcium and alkalinity daily, you know, per 25 gallons. And then in a week, test the water parameters and see where you're at, where you're at, and then make adjustments from there. If you find out in a week that your water parameters are still subpar, you're not really in a good range, uh, then bump it up a little bit, but do it like in small increments and test. So you're in saying dose week. once a week and then test, like dose, wait a week, then test? No, dose every day. And that, then, that amount, and then test once a week to see what the changes are on the Because right, I was kind of iffy on that. I've heard a, uh, I've heard you say it before, and you say dose 15 milliliters per 25, and then and then check a week later. So I'm glad you clarified that. So dose yeah. 15 milliliters daily. Yeah. per 25 gallons for your system daily for a week. Check it, and then and then go from there. Yeah, but that's with a medium stock, stocked LPS to SPS tank. Now, um, if you're all softies, you, you need to, you know, reconsider that amount. Uh, start off with maybe five milliliters per 25 if you have all softies and a lot of coralline and stuff, because you're going to want to, you know, uh, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, it's not, like I said, it's not going to be as demanding. And then once you move up to SPS, uh, by the time you move uh, move up to SPS, you've already, you should have already built that foundation of knowing what your tank usually runs at and is comfortable mm -hmm. at. So that adjustment won't be as difficult. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I, I, I get exactly what you're saying. Um, so this is another question I have for you because I know you're about to start something new. Um, but for those who like me, you know, once I get the 75 going, I will, I will be dosing. Uh, I plan to get the same pump that you have and then just dose accordingly. Um, I'll probably do it on my own for a little bit. Like, like you said, five or 15 milliliters and then just kind of judge on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, once I kind of get it down to what I need per week, then that's when I'll set up the pump. Um, and again, I know you're starting something new, but what, what, what do you recommend for those who are starting out? Like, who think they can get more, um, you know, color or something out of like a color supplement. Like, mm -hmm. is that something you think that should be that a beginner can try out? Or you think that's strictly for, for the, the professional, you know, reefer, if you will. I think, uh, I think that anybody can do something like a red sea color program. Um, the thing with that is, is it's going to be, you know, how are you financially dependent? You can have whatever you want in this hobby if you can afford it. Um, mm -hmm. now if you have, uh, these, I mean, primarily these are going to help uh, stony corals. So I don't really know what they're going to do for soft corals, but uh, I mean, I don't really have that many soft corals to really tell you how the Red Sea Color Program does. Um, and this, you know, isn't a review on that particular program, but I have been using Red Sea f from all pretty much the beginning of this of this system, and um, I've saw I've seen good color and growth from, and I and I want to put it towards that system. I mean, there's no guarantees that it's actually what's causing everything, but I have noticed the difference between this system and my last one, um, and the one before that. Uh, since I've started using that now I am going to be I'll do a video on this I get the stuff tomorrow but uh, the KZ has a new uh, the one a uh, new program coming out the color system and there's I haven't seen a review yet here in the United States so I will be doing a full video series on that new sure. program I'll be discontinuing the Red Sea color bro program temporarily and doing a 10 week period of this new KZ all in one and then doing a full review on that so I mean we'll be able to tell within 10 weeks if, the, if it's going to be beneficial for me well, that's cool man I'm looking forward to that yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So here's another just question, uh, not off topic, but off my my uh, question list. Um, what's it cost you to run the uh, Red Sea Core or the Color Program on a monthly basis? 
Um, I really don't have a monthly estimate. I'd have to break it up here. Um, well, say, so what do you buy something that lasts like lasts like three months or so? Or so well, or so? I buy the 500 milliliters and I get them at uh, of a, a better premium than the average yeah. Joe would. Um, and it costs me like sixty dollars for six months. Oh yeah, that's not bad. And then, Either way, even if it's like a hundred bucks for six months, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean it's about it's about six months, and I dose. Uh, but you're probably I mean, heavy. Uh, no, I'm at three milliliters of each a day. It, the rule of thumb is it's one milliliter per 50 um, milliliters of calcium a day. So I do about 150 milliliters of calcium. So that's three milliliters. Yeah. And uh, and I dose that every day of each one. And uh, it gives me about six months. Now, for this new KZ product, I'm getting 10 weeks for about 73. So it's not. Hopefully it's, it's worth double. it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, well, we'll find out. And I mean, well, I'm, and I love KZ and I've been using it for a long time. And. And um and I and it, everything's worth a shot in my book. So what what shot. do you mean by you've been using KZ for a while? Uh, KZ products are all the Zeobit products. Oh okay um, yeah you mentioned and that. all that stuff and I use them in my fresh water. I mean not my fresh water. I use them like coral vitalizer, coral snow, all that stuff. I use that in this tank already. Um, so I've had good luck with them. So I want to give this new color system a shot because uh, why not right? So and a lot of people have been it, kind of it'll giving be, me it'll slack. be cool yeah. Yeah, yeah, they they give me cool. slack because they're like, hey, uh, why fix something that isn't broken? And that's not the point of this hobby. The point of this hobby is once you get to, to get to a certain point, you want to progress and see what things work. And I want to, you know, take this leap for everybody who hasn't taken it and say, hey, this is what's worked for me and give people a fair, uh, you know, review on it, you know, so. Yeah, so that's going to be a really, really cool uh, series because I know we had the Zeovit system uh, going on and I, I was enjoying that. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know like like a lot of people they have questions they're interested in doing something or buying something and then and they watch a review like you had with the zeo vet so it was nice and you were at like what week six or something what, on uh i was at uh, i think it was higher than that i want to say week eight or something like that before it went down uh, yeah and, and it was just getting you really started, went man down. yeah i really went down yeah and it, it really it really was just getting good after getting through those initial phases of cycling and all that stuff and it just really started showing the color and then it just sucked man yeah that's so. that's uh not a good thing i remember that was like right when um right when i subscribed to you because that was probably like four months or so ago something mm -hmm. like that yeah. right i guess yeah, something like that. Yeah, something. And I remember I was just—I think the first video I watched when you had, you had like a little mini crash. You went on vacation. Mm -hmm. You had mother-in-law coming over doing fixing your tank yeah, or something. Yeah, mom did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I think that was the first video I ever watched, and then uh, it's it's the rest is history. I mean, I, I, I'd like to I'd like to say we're decently good friends. Um, so next question. Um, Target feeding. Do you target feed your corals? Do you recommend it? Do you think it's mm -hmm. BS? What do you think? Um, I I have noticed a difference. I I only I used to do a lot of different things when it came to feeding. I used Julian's thing, which is the target feeder. Um, I haven't done a review on it. I did do a video a long, long time ago on feeding coral. It's like one of my first ones. I, I mean, the channel's only nine months old, and it seems like it's been forever ago. It was um, four hundred videos ago. Yeah, something like that. Actually, yeah, something like that, like one hundred and thirty. Uh, anyways, um. I like to target feed once every two weeks, and I use uh, uh, BRS Reef Chili. Uh, I put some Phyto in there if I have some, and um, that's about it. And then I just target feed with that, and I do some uh, bigger pieces like Mysis or something. Um, but I do it every other week. That's it, man. I don't – every week – I mean, some people do it multiple times during the week. I don't really feel a need to. It just kind of adds to the nutrients of the tank. So Yeah, I've been doing it twice a week basically. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but what I've been doing – is <clears throat> I like kind of switch up. I don't have like an actual feeding regimen for my fish and my corals. Uh, but what I do is I do like pellets one day, and the next day I'll I'll grab. Um, I have I got some uh, freeze dried um, shrimp, so I'll crush that up, throw it in there. Next day I'll do flakes, and then I have some like I have like a cocktail of frozen stuff, so I'll do that. But like probably twice a week when I do one of the frozen foods, mm -hmm. I will do a like a half scoop of reef chili. And then I'll target feed. I'll turn my fans off. I will just, you know, I'll suck some out of the top where there's no, like, chunks of mysis. And I'll, like, you know, spray it over my, my zoanthas, the smaller ones. But I have noticed a difference with my A-can. Mm -hmm. The A-can you gave me. Um, um, it seems like it, I think I have, when I got it from you, like, a month, five, six weeks ago, whatever, it had two heads. Now I have four. And especially the big one. He's He's doing good. So... I target feed that. I do my um, 
Um, I do my Recordia and I do my Duncans and then like a couple of my like Zoas and Pallies, the big, big head ones. And I'll do those. But do you think like two, cause I do it two times a week. Is that, is that overkill? Well, I think, I think it is in your situation, just because I know that you, you are struggling with a nutrient issue already. And in, I mean, personally, if I was in your situation, I wouldn't be feeding my fish every day. If, okay. If I was in your situation, my fish would be fed every other day or every three days, a uh, minimal amount of food to help them, you know, uh, you know, at least eat and survive and all that stuff. Um, I wouldn't feed my corals at all because when you feed your fish, you're going to be feeding the corals, uh, you know, partially feeding the corals anyways. Um, and I think it's more nutrient dependent. I mean, if you're struggling with, with a certain thing, uh, adding to it with, with excess food and stuff in hopes to making the coral happier, isn't going to work out because uh, the coral is going to be unhappy based on the water parameters that you're providing. And then by, by adding food, you're just making those water parameters worse, pissing the coral off and defeating the purpose of feeding them in the first place. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I think if you cut back to either not feeding until we get the system up, the 75 up or in somebody else or for anybody else, I mean, feeding once a week or every other week, once a month, I mean, or, you know, you don't even have to at all. It just depends on your system, how your corals react and how much you're feeding your main display fish. So I hope that kind of cleared up that a little yeah. bit answer wise. So maybe I'll cut back. I mean, like I said, I've seen some growth out of my Duncans and my, um, my eight cans. So maybe I'll just, one twice twice a month maybe just to kind of make me feel better that i'm actually feeding them uh, well you don't they don't need it i mean that's not something they need you don't need i mean but i've seen that i've noticed a difference well yeah i mean maybe, you'll maybe notice they're just growing and they're just probably just growing to be honest with you i mean i mean I've, i went three months without even feeding my tank at all any coral food and my stuff still grew yeah. just as normal you know you might get a little bit more polyp extension now that you're feeding them but at the end of the day if you're feeding and it's you are fighting a nutrient issue you are defeating the purpose Mm-hmm. So that's how, that's my opinion on it. I'm sure everyone has their own opinion, but yeah, that's mine. So, you know, what opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, right? Of course. Hey, um, oh, I'll say it, dude. So here's another question. Um, and this is, this is assuming, you know, my 75 goes well and, and parameters are where they should be. Um, say I bring home like a little, whatever I bring home a little frag. It's, it's tiny. It's a, it's an inch tall. Say it's an acro frag or whatever. Um, how, assuming that my water parameters stay where they need to be, how long until that acro frag or frog spawn frag is like the size of a baseball? Is that something that takes six months, a year or two months? Like, what do you think? That's system dependent, man. I can't give you an answer for that. I mean, something might grow better in your system than it will grow mine and vice versa. I mean, there's really no saying, uh, Granted, if you start off with a bigger frag, frag you're going to uh, you know, have the potential of – say you get an acropora that has more than one stem. It has like 10 stems, right? Mm-hmm. Well, each one of those stems is going to grow off uh, instead of starting from one and growing off. So, I mean, it's going to you know, grow faster the bigger the frag. But to say if it's going to be a baseball size in six months, I mean, that's that's on you. And how Is you, that how like you, at least like a year plus? It's not something that's going to happen in three months. Well, I mean – Let's just take my bird's nest colony on the left-hand side, for example. Yep. That was one stick. Okay. One stick with a nub. Uh, Your tank's a half, months old? Nine and a half months old. Okay. And it's about the size, a little, 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 little less than a basketball. So, and, and, but I know people who have a bird's nest that, you know, have the same frag, and then a year later, it's only the size of a softball. So it, it just yeah. depends. And it's not doesn't really say anything about that person. It just says that your system isn't, you know, isn't where it should be for that particular coral, but you might grow another coral better. You know, okay. it's just, you just kind of got to keep that perspective there. Well, good. So just a couple of small, uh, or just go, or here's one question I kind of wrote down while we were talking. Is there any corals? This is off. This isn't for anybody. This is just for my knowledge. Any corals that you've had experience with that you didn't do well with over the years? Um, the elegance coral has been the one that, um, he kind of got the uh, elegance, I think it's like elegance coral disease or something. Like my system was growing everything great and this coral just welted away. There was, did nothing. Yeah. Everything was good. I mean, it's growing acros, like no problem, but uh, you know, th- it just didn't do well. So that was the elegance coral. And um, I can't grow leather corals in my tank. I just can't do it. Uh, it's probably because of the lack of nutrients. Not enough nutrients, yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's certain softies that don't grow very well um but the yellow button polyp softy you know that zoanthid that thing grows like a freaking weed um but uh yeah leathers don't do well with leathers and then that one elegance coral that was it that's the, really the only issues i've had yeah. recently I, ha- I had the one um 
candy cane coral. And now that I kind of know a little more, I think it was like not doing well when I bought it. But at the time I was like, oh, this thing looks cool. Let me buy it. And it didn't do well. So now I'm kind of iffy. I want to get one because I see a lot of channels, especially like newer guys that have like a thriving one. Mm -hmm. I just haven't found one yet that I like. I mean, a lot of the ones I look that I see in the stores, they just look like crap. Um, but that was the one that I like have, didn't have the best of luck with. That's really the only coral that I bought mm -hmm. that I had to take out. I mean, everything else is either where it was because my calcium levels are too high or it's grown. So like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm that, that's that's the one of mine that I've that I'd like to conquer eventually because I think they do look cool. Uh, but last la, uh, last question for me, I'm kind of running out of time, um, and this isn't for anybody's help or, or, or knowledge or anything. But what's the most you've ever spent on a coral? <laughs> was that elegance? What would that cost? It was 130 bucks. I've seen yeah. look, they look pretty cool. But though. that was before I ran into my connections, man. This was a long, 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 long time. Now you're gonna ago. get one for like 40 bucks. Oh, less than that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Damn, it just dude. depends. But I wouldn't. I. I'm not an LPS fan, man. I mean, I am, but I'm mm. not. Uh, I mean, I. I just kind of. I've. I'm at the point now where I love sticks so much. I love seeing I, the growth on a weekly sticks. basis. Yeah, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I love seeing the growth on a weekly basis. That LPS just don't do it for me anymore. I mean, they do, but they don't. I mean, seeing a new <laughs> head on Aiken's cool, but it's but seeing an entire nest just take off is more of my... Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's really cool. And, like, even, like, I haven't gotten to that point where I'm seeing it take off, but, like, a couple of the corals that you sent me, like, the, um, a couple of the acros, and, and like, I have an encrusting hydrophora. Like, it's cool to see at the base that it's actually encrusting. Mm -hmm. So, like, not that it's getting bushy or anything, but it's cool to actually see it encrusting. It kind of makes me feel like I'm, even though I'm not doing a lot right, that I'm doing something right. Something just, right, yeah, that justification, yeah, yeah. And that's just, you know, that's just how I progress. Everybody progresses differently. And I just kind of moved into that that mindset that I want to see it grow on a weekly basis. I want to see that my efforts on a daily basis are paying off at the end yeah. of the week, per se. Kind of like getting your own little check at the end of the yeah. week after, oh, I did all my maintenance and look at my tank looks, you know, good or it's growing. Speaking of maintenance, that, uh, that video you put out for your, oh, congratulations on 100K, man. That's our, uh, our 100K, uh, I wish, bro, right? Yeah. 100K, 100K uh, views. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a thousand mm -hmm. subscribers, man, that's a big milestone. And uh, I certainly will be posting my video soon. Um, but yeah, back to that video, dude, that was cool. It's cool to see somebody else do, uh, do their maintenance. Um, you see a bare bottom tank, you don't realize how much shit settles on the bottom. So it's yeah. kind of easy to see all that stuff yeah. up there. And I, and I get most of it out, man. And, and, uh, and that's why, that's one of the reasons why I have a bare bottom tank is because I can just stick that power head in there, blow everything up. Filter socks yeah. were just packed full. I went through. You know, that, that filter socks, I changed that video. I changed them out the night before I went to sleep just because they were just, yeah. yeah so, Well, man, it was fun. All right, we man. We still have our uh, Apex video to do, but mm -hmm. that's going to take me a few days to come up with questions because there's a lot of them. Yeah, that's fine, man. All right, guys. Well, anyways, uh, I'll, like I said, I'll put uh, before, as in all my videos, I'll put Mike's uh, channel in, in the link in the description, and you guys can check him out. And as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Yep.